Today we have a free project designed by Aditya Sitar from Laundry Basket Quilts. Tell us about your new project. Oh, this has been so much fun to prepare. I have chose a wonderful fabrics from Heart um, Content Collection that it's coming up with Moda. And I use the Heart Content uh, Charm Pack. I use the accent fabric from my binding and the handles uh, for the basket and the base. I also use uh, silhouettes to give a little detail of applique. And we have learned in previous classes a basic applique, fusible applique. You're going to be able to go to those videos, use those techniques and incorporate into the small project and practice some set on point blocks. To make this table runner, we need two blocks, two uh, basket blocks, just like I have it right here. We're going to start by choosing 16 squares. Those squares are two and a half inch, a size of a, a mini charm pack, or you can cut your own. There are six lights, one, two, three, one, two, and one. Then there is four reds. I put three blues and three honey for this particular block. Next step, what I'm going to do, I love to do chain sewing. So I place my squares one on the top of the other, just like this, and start sewing, starting with the first block on the top, stitch, 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 stitch. Then I go for my second row, do the same thing, place them right sides together, start stitching, open them up, and then go ahead and stitch them right here, laying the block sets together, and I have a really cool technique that holds all of the pieces, just like that. On the back, it's time to press, and I press my seam allowances towards the right, towards the left, towards the right, towards the left. That's allow me, when I sew my rows together, to nest the seams really nice. All right, in the meantime, we also have to prepare the sides for our basket. We're gonna need a two and a half by six and a half rectangle cut from a background fabric that is included in your kit. We're gonna need a two and seven eighths half square triangles for the base of the basket. That's the accent fabric that we're gonna also use it on a binding. It's nice to match some of the fabric from the center of the quilt to the outside to the binding. And what I'm going to do is place my triangles and remember, lay this front of yourself before you sew to make sure that you have the triangles positioned the right way. You're gonna start sewing right here, straight sew, finish sewing this way, press the seam allowance towards the light background, and now it's time to applique our handle. In our previous videos, we have learned how to do a basic fusible applique. And in this case, what I'm going to do is trace my design that I got it from the pattern for the handle into a fusible webbing, and I'm going to press it to a piece of fabric that matches the base of my basket, and I'm gonna cut it exactly on a line, just like I have it right here. What I like to do is the pattern give me the exact size of my uh, handles. What I like to do is leave a quarter inch a little bit longer so that way I can set my handle into the seam. Very important thing to do it. So remember this template is a finished size of a handle. You're gonna need a little bit to set it into the seam. I simply take it the paper away, the fusible webbing is on it, I'm gonna place my handles and I place them just about an inch below this line right here and I'm going to fuse them in place. As soon as I finish fusing, I'm gonna use a zigzag stitch and um, nylon invisible thread to secure my handles in place. You can also refer to our other videos where we have learned a blanket stitch and button stitch and use those as well. So we just finished our block. Let's go over some details that we have done. We sew the basket handles on the right to the center square, that's a 16 patch. Then we sew this side, then we add a triangle. And I love you to look at it from the back at the block. When I sew my sides, I push the seam allowance towards the center 
the side, the handle, again, towards the center. And when I add the triangle right here, I push it towards the background. That allows me to get nice transition here and a great points right here. So when I sew my blocks together or to a project, it's going to be nice and it's not too bulky right here. So, Kimberly, we're ready to put the table runner together. I can see you're excited about that. Let's take our blocks. We're going to place them point to point. And don't be afraid, if you have never done anything on point, this is a great beginning project. We're going to cut some triangles. They're going to frame our blocks. We're going to need half square triangles for the corners of our project. And half square triangles, let me move this just for a little bit, half square triangles are cut from a square. So you take a square, and in this case it's eight inch square, and we're gonna cut it from point to point. The bias is right here. Do you see the stretch? Yeah, that's the bias. So it's going to stay inside our uh, project. The straight grain is right here. It's going to hold the shape of our table runner beautifully. So we got those done. The second cut we have to make is quarter square triangle. Our setting triangles for our blocks have to be cut from a quarter square triangle. So we had a square. The square was 15 and a half inches. I cut it from point to point and I got four quarter square triangles. I'm going to only use two for our project, but I need to cut it this way because I want a straight grain here so it does not stretch. I want my bias on the inside. Okay, let's place our projects together now. Our blocks, perfect. You're really great helper, Kimberly. We need to do more our projects together. Something on point, I have a feeling. So right here, we just lay everything up. And what I like to do, anytime I create a quilt, table runner, anything that I do, I finish my block, lay everything on my designing wall or on my floor if it's very, very large, and I look at it to make sure that all the colors are floating nice, that I didn't make some kind of mistake. If a flower is going certain sort of direction, I change it. Um, in this case, I'm using the hard content fabrics and the flowers are weaving back and forth so the fabric does not have a direction and it's great to use for a background. This is a beautiful piece of fabric. What I like to do is now I separate my pieces into a little bit of a blocks. Yes, this uh, rows. So this would be first row, second row, and those are my corners. And I'm going to focus first on my large triangles. This is the bias edge. I want to sew it right here. Yes, you can do this one. I place my triangle on the top of my block, just like this. I match it up this point right here. And I have learned all early in quilting, using pins really helps when you're dealing with bias edges and setting pieces. So I'm going to pin it right here, put another pin down here, and I'm using fine pins. They're just really nice to work with it. And here. Now I'm going to move on and sew from the tip straight down, holding everything really nice. Sometimes uh, when you sew uh, your fabrics and you have a, a block and a bias edge, it's nice to keep it pin so the bias edge doesn't stretch. Well, we just finished sewing our setting triangles into our blocks. And I just want to give you a little tip. When you sew setting triangles, you always start on the top right here where the edges are exact and sew straight down. And you have to be careful because you have a bias edge. If your sewing machine does not like bias edges, putting the triangle in the bottom and having the block on the top where there is a straight grain and the teeth of your sewing machine are grabbing is going to control some of the bias edge. Sometimes we like to be in control and if this piece is on the top, I like to pull and push. So pinning, keeping triangle on the bottom, tips for getting a really nice seams. We now pressed it and we push the seam allowance towards our triangle. The next step, we're going to take this row, place it right over, and it is very important that we focus first on matching right here to getting a great transition using a pin. We're going to pin it in place, 
oh that's gonna be a nice project lay things really nice pin 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 then flip the block over lay our triangle right on it pin 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 and now it's time to sew and when i sew i always start from the center at the transition point and sew out to the right flip the project and sew from here out so i've always struggled with quilts on point and you've just given us two excellent tips one of the tips was to try to have the triangle on the bottom when you're sewing it through your sewing machine, which mm -hmm. I've never done, so that's my mistake number one. And then you sew from the center out. Even if you're on a large quilt, she'll pick the very center of the quilt to sew out instead of starting and going tip to tip, which is my mistake number two. And then number three is I used to just add these cor corner squares as I was going, and obviously you're supposed to add those last. So these are three tips that are really going to help you when you are doing quilts on point. And I'm so glad that I learned them today. Well, those are the things that I use, and I hope it's going to work for you too. Everybody has to find their own way of doing things, and it's nice to try what other people do it because sometimes you're like, wow, I should have done this before. I learn every day. Believe me, I have learned some things here too. Thanks, Kimberly. So right now what I'm going to do, we have pressed this seam allowance towards one side and we are ready to add the corners to our table runner. Those finished triangles, what I like to do is I fold them in half very gently, very gently, and pinch it right here, just a little bit. That will help me center them up when I'm placing them on my table runner. So right now I would put a pin right here, pin, pin, sew it, flip it open, do the same thing on the opposite side, mark the center, center it up, sew it, flip it open, press it, and I would go ahead and add this triangle and this triangle, and our table runner will be finished, ready for layering with bedding, backing, and then we will quilt. Do, do you put the triangles on the bottom when you're sewing on these? Uh, if I have the choice, I do it okay. again, because you want the sewing machine to grab it. If you wanted to, pin it quite a bit, hold it on the top. And what I like sometimes too, I keep the triangle on the bottom because there is no seams in a triangle. In the blocks right here, we have seams. We had those seams as well here. So if I have those seams on the top, I'm able to push them the way how I want them to lay. Sometimes when we sew, they flip and then we get a little um, stiffer pointer. Mm -hmm. So keeping them on the top helps you control them and see what they're doing under there. So that's why I like to do it. And again, it's a personal preference. You have to try it, see if you like it, and go for it. Once our table run a quilt top is done, we're going to move on to our second step. And I have one prepared for you right here. Let's move this over. Oh, this is going to be so pretty. And in this one, what I did is I took the table runner, quilted it with overall quilting, and when I was finished quilting, I add silhouettes on the top of it. And the silhouettes that I add to it are the uh, laser cut silhouettes called Dancing in the Rain silhouettes. The colors went great with the fabrics that I had chosen for your table runner, and I love them over this background that has a really nice print to it. Those silhouettes are laser cut, and what you do is you just crease the edge, pull it away, and this is a little sticky. Do you see? You can put it anywhere you want it, and you can line them up, fuse them in place. And what I did, I just took an iron, fused them in place. With no steam. No steam. And I did a straight stitch. And if you want to learn how to do that, we have done this in our applique, fusible applique, raw edge applique class, where we just use the quilting stitch, straight stitch, as the stitch that holds our applique in place. I like this technique for table runner because eventually the edge is gonna come a little bit up and it's gonna give more feel to it, a little bit three-dimensional look to the project. I really like that. And it's a very quick method. Because the table runner was pre-quilted, 
I don't have to worry about any packers on the back as I'm quilting and stitching over the appliques and I really love that. Then I finish with binding. So what length stitch do you use? I use a, a just regular straight stitch on my sew machine was 2.0. You don't want the stitch to be too big because you're taking a lot of curves and turns. So with the smallest stitch, it's easier to stop, needle position down, lift the foot and turn and hide the curve. You know, if you have a big stitch, then it's a, a create a little bit bubbles. And what I like to do is I start stitching right here. I come up to a leaf from a leaf uh, from the uh, branch, I go on to the leaf, staying one eight on the inside on my applique. I stitch all the way around, go to the leaf, come back, go back to the branch, and I never cut and break the thread. I just keep on going. Sometimes if I have to go ahead and stitch, double stitch over something, I go ahead and do it. I like that better than clipping the threads and having the threads sticking up on my project. Do you use a walking foot? Uh, for this particular project, because it was small, I use the regular foot. If it's a little bit larger pro a project, I love the walking foot because it's that open space in the front. And a walking foot helps you keep the fabric moving. But like I said, this one was pre-quilted. So I did not have to worry about shifting of the backing, bedding, and a quilt top. I only had to worry to stitch this on the top. So I actually used embroidered foot that it's an open foot for applique regular foot. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing this project. It is very beautiful. Thank you. It is all yours.